Welcome back to the Crochet Credits with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do the Scrubbing Bobbles Crochet Dish Cloth. This is a dish cloth using a brand new yarn called Lily Sugar and Cream and it's called Scrub Off. And you're going to notice that it has scrubbing power that has been worked into it. It's still 100% cotton but we have sections that have been uh, processed differently to give you the scrubbing power. Let me show you the leftover of the ball of the sample that I'm about to show you. So this is what you pretty much have left at the end of a ball. Of course you can always just do another round if you wanted to use it up completely. Uh, this is a really great pattern. You're gonna need a five millimeter size H crochet hook and I'm gonna tell you how to change the size just in case you'd like to make a bigger or smaller dishcloth. I found this yarn to be really quite addictive and I found myself staring at the ball and what I didn't realize that on the first glance here is that everything is looking very kind of unique. In the sense that when you go to crochet with this you're gonna see that it's gonna be variegated and then you're going to see that it's gonna transition in the scrub off section here with solid green. So when I looked at it I'm thinking well I see other colors that not just solid green and as I work through it the green changed to a different color so it wasn't a variegated anymore and but when the scrub off came back into play it was then variegated and then a different color of green came and then the variegated came back and then it was a variegated of this and etc. My point being is that it took almost this entire dishcloth before the color returned back to the original color that we started. And if I look carefully here you see that this uh, uh, peachy color here or papaya it doesn't return until the end of the ball. So it's kind of really neat. So when you're looking at these balls you might actually find them really quite addictive and to be able to follow when you'll see the colors come back into play. So this is Lily Sugar and Cream Scrub Off. Now I'm gonna teach you how to change the sizes and we're gonna do a small sample with you here on camera today. So the dishcloth you see on here is bigger than what is suggested. It's suggested to go to eight inches and then do a border but I wasn't paying attention. I went to nine inches and then did a border. My point being is that I could actually do that and I still had yarn to play with. It depends on your tension of course. So what you're gonna find is that you're gonna have these bobbles that will pop up so it's extra scrubbing power. The other side it's flat but this side has those bobbles. I don't know if you can see that here on camera. So what we have is that these are in multiples of four. So if you'd like to change the size I've already worked it out is that you always keep it in sets of four. So four, 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 four and you'll notice that this pattern says chain 32. Well that's divisible by four. So what we want to do is that we want to crochet either to the pattern or we're going to cho uh, choose and change it yourself. If you make anything bigger one of these dish class is pretty much one ball. So if you wanna make it bigger you may have to consider buying more than one ball. So without further ado let's get started today. We're gonna be starting off with a five millimeter size H crochet hook. I would be strategic on where you start. Look at the inside of the ball and look at the outside. Get the yarn that is refined because it makes it easier for the chain in order for yourself to get started. So do yourself a favor and look for that and if you have to just adjust the ball that's what you would need to do. So just uh, begin and it says to chain 32. So I'm gonna leave that in your hands but I'm gonna do just a smaller sample. Remember I said that the multiples are in stitches of four. So I'm only gonna just do 12 stitches. That's divisible by four. So one, two, three, four and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So either go all the way to 32 or just have a multiple of four. So let's do row number one. No matter what size that you did as long as it's divisible by four or it's the original chaining of 32 you're gonna go second chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one and two. The color that you see on camera today is called energetic pink and you're going to single crochet yourself all the way across your sample. Okay so just go right across the chain and then maybe at the end of your chain in just a moment. Once you get to the end of your chain just turn your work and now rows number two and three get repeated later on down the road. So we're just going to chain a total of three that counts as a double crochet. So one, two, three and that's your first stitch. Go to your second then to start. So you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across your row. So just keep an eye on the ball. It gets addictive to see when that uh, scrub off will come into play and just continue to double crochet yourself all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this. This is row number two. So I'm coming up to the end of row number two. That's it. So you're gonna turn your work and now do row number three. Number three is just a single crochet. So chain up one and just single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across for row number three. Now if you were working with the regular size sample you'll notice that the yarn would have already changed uh, uh, texture on you and it would be awesome. So let's uh, continue along. Row number three, single crochet all the way across. Because it's a double crochet row below when you're finishing up row number three make sure you go into a turning chain. Don't ever go into a gapping space. So go right into the turning chain to finish the last one. 
this is row number three. So rows number four and five are asking you to repeat second and third rows one more time. So what I need you to do is that I need you to look at second row and second row is to double crochet. So chain up three and then just double crochet starting in the next one all the way across your project again. So just double crochet all the way across. This is repeating of row number two which is technically row number four. So I'm finishing up row number four just double crocheting in the last one and then row number five this is uh, technically row number three again. So it's just chain up one and one single crochet all the way across. So the next uh, row that we're gonna do row number six is the, gonna be the bobble row. So you're just gonna single crochet your way all the way across and again watch for that turning chain on the end whenever you have a double crochet um, below. So you'll have double crochets when it's solid double crochets and you'll also have them when you're doing the bobble rows as well which will be next. So just go right into a turning chain. So let's start number six. Turn your work and we're now we're gonna do the bobbles. So you're gonna, everything is in sets of four. So here's how you're gonna start. You're gonna chain up three, counts as a double crochet and in the next two you're going to place in one double crochet and then you're gonna do a bobble into the next and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So the fourth one here is going to be a bobble. So you're just gonna wrap the hook going into the stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold it. And you wanna do that a total of five times. So wrap, in, pull through, pull through two and hold. And keep on doing that until you get a total of six loops on your hook. And six loops means that you totally did it five times which is what you wanna do. So there's your five and this is your six. Pull through all of them and then move and double crochet the next three in a row. So one, two, and three. And in my hands the scrub off is coming into play. So the next one is a bobble so let's do the same thing. So wrap and going in, pull through, pull through two and hold it and keep doing that a total of five times. and you will see six loops on your hook. Because it's kind of fluffy and stuff it may not be so obvious but um, you can't have this kind of texture and not have any kind of um, um, it, like it can't be always that clear to see all your stitches. So uh, but you can see it here and that's pretty awesome. So you have a six loops on your hook. If you just count to five you should be good. So eventually you're gonna come all the way down to the end and just one double crochet in each then all the way to the end which is only three left anyway. So just think of it this way. There was three at the end, there's three at the beginning and that puts you back in balance and you can see it on this side. So now it says to repeat rows three to six until the pattern works out to be about eight inches and you're gonna end on the fifth row. So let's uh, review uh, rows number uh, three to six once more. So row number three it says to single crochet so you're gonna chain up one and you're gonna do one single crochet in each of the double crochets that exist. You can feel it with your fingers and your hook can feel where the hole is if you can't see it. And so you just work your way all the way across and you're just single crocheting. So that was row number three, just a, a, a single crochet across. Rows number four and five are what we already know. So rows number four is technically row number two. So we're gonna chain up three. That counts as your first double crochet and then you want to double crochet in each one of the stitches going across. I got two stitches left so I got the top of this one and I got the turning chain to worry about. So just going in to the last turning chain and putting it in. So row number five, turn your work is the single crochet. So just think about it, this. You got your bobble, single, double, single, bobble. Okay, that's how you remember it. So just chain up one and do one single crochet in the top of your stitches going all the way back across. And then okay, turn your work and now this row is the bobble again. So you're gonna chain up three. That's your first double crochet and then the next one, next two are each a double crochet. So one and two. The nice thing about this scrub off here is that you see that there's uh, fibers hanging off. They're not looped in any way so they don't get caught on your hook. The next one, the fourth one in is your bobble. So just wrap the hook and start collecting and do it five times. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then pull through all of the loops and now the next three in a row will each be one 
double crochet. So one, two, and three. Okay, and the next one is a bobble. So do it five times. So one, two, three, four, and five. Pull through. And then the last three that you'll have is each one double crochet. So one, two, and don't forget that turning chain on the last one. So you're just gonna repeat what you already know. So if you look at it from this perspective, you have turn around. So it's a single, double, single, and then a bobble. Okay, so single, double, single, bobble. Eventually you're gonna come up to the end of the project and it says to end on row number five. So I'm just now finishing up to the top. So eight, you have to go to eight inches, but here's what we need to look for. This is the bobble. It'll be a single, double, and single, and that's where you're gonna stop. So the bobble is not that close to the edge. Once you're ready to go around, you're just going to chain up one and you're just gonna equally space out your single crochets going all the way down the side of the project. So if it starts to buckle on you as far as like uh, pulling too tight, that means that you're jumping too quickly and make sure that you go into some chain work. Don't go into a space cause that'll keep it open. So go and just find your way. Uh, because it is uh, easy to work with, you'll find that your hooks will just sink in right where they need to. Now the corners of each one of these will always be the same. There's always gonna be three single crochets in a corner in order to effectively turn. And the nice thing about it too is that the bottom uh, piece here and the top, you can see the stitches. So you only have to equally space out the single crochets going down the sides as you come on all the way around. So please do that now and I'm about to hit a corner. And I'm just gonna continue. So you can see it, it gets a little easier when it's into the regular cotton work. So on the very edge corner, so just put in three. So one, two, and three. And then just come across the base and keep, and just let it turn. This is the starting, so just trap it right up underneath it and then it will be well hidden and keep that going as you see. So please do that all the way around and I will see you at the end of this round. So eventually you'll get all the way back around and just put in a two more double crochets or single crochets in the end and then just slip stitch it to the beginning. So it doesn't matter which yarns that whether you're finishing off with the scrub off section or this, it doesn't really matter. You'll find that it's easy to work with and it's good to go. To hide in your loose ends because you are doing dishes, you're gonna wanna use a tapestry needle to hide that in. So just using a tapestry needle, just weave it in even a small section like this would be useful for my, at least my house. And just go up underneath the stitch work and just make sure you go back and forth a total of three times to catch everything in. If you only go twice then it has a potential to follow. So three times going through three different uh, paths back and forth is a great way to hide your pieces. So please do that and then that's it for today's project. So that's it for now. Have a great day. We hope to see you again real soon. <music>